Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar this morning. Um, thank you to those that are this evening. Um, that shows you how tired I am. I feel like it's already the, still the morning. Uh, but we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us this evening or for watching us if you are viewing this webinar at a later time. Um, we are so excited to host this webinar this evening. We know that our educators are some of the most trusted messengers when it comes to delivering information. And we also know that our educators have a lot of questions about vaccines and what it means to keep our students as well as our own children safe and healthy in our public schools. So we are very pleased this evening to have with us some professionals who will share information with us to help us have that information that we can share with our own family, friends, and of course the parents of our students who often come to us with questions and as well as that we can arm ourselves with um, as we are parents ourselves. I myself am a parent to three students who attend public schools here in Colorado and I find it very important to have information and knowledge so that I can make the best decisions for my own children as well. So we want to thank you for being with us this evening and thank our partners who are here with us to provide this information. Um, we will not have time for live Q&A this evening, but our uh, one of our partners, Olivia from CDPHE, will put her email into the chat. You are welcome to email Olivia and she will follow up with you with any questions that you may have. And with that, it is my great pleasure to turn it over to Dr. Burakoff, who is going to walk us through some information this evening. Thank you again. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So today I'm going to cover the first two topics, COVID-19 vaccine facts and vaccine safety, and then Olivia will discuss access and give a campaign update. Next slide, please. So starting with some background, how do vaccines work? Vaccines work by teaching your body how to recognize specific dangers so your immune system is prepared to fight off that infection. They help build immunity and prevent disease that can be dangerous or even deadly. Next slide, please. Some things to know about COVID vaccines are that they cannot give you COVID. None of the vaccines contain the live virus that causes COVID-19. They also do not affect or interact with DNA in any way. The mRNA in an mRNA vaccine never enters the nucleus of the cell, which is where the DNA, our genetic material, is kept. In fact, the cell breaks down and gets rid of the mRNA soon after the vaccine is given. For viral vector vaccines, like J&J, &J, the genetic material delivered does not integrate into a person's DNA. mRNA vaccines are new, but researchers have been studying and working with mRNA vaccines for decades. Next slide, please. There are currently three authorized COVID-19 vaccines in the United States. Moderna and Pfizer are mRNA vaccines. Pfizer is available for anyone five years and older and Moderna is authorized for 18 and up. Both are two doses given three or four weeks apart. You're considered fully vaccinated two weeks after the second dose of an mRNA series. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a viral vector vaccine available as one shot for those who are 18 or older. A, vaccine, uh, a person is considered fully vaccinated two weeks after their dose of J&J vaccine. While any of these vaccines will give you more protection than not getting a COVID vaccine at all, just today, the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices voted that, quote, mRNA vaccines are preferred over the Janssen COVID-19 vaccine for the prevention of COVID-19 for those 18 years of age and over, end quote. This was after hearing new data indicating that a rare blood clotting syndrome is more common among people who recently got a J&J vaccine than previously believed. Next slide, please. As of December 12, 76% of eligible Coloradans, around 4 million people, have received at least one dose, and close to 69% are fully immunized. Over 1.2 million eligible people have received an additional dose, for example, a booster. Next slide, please. CDPHE recommends that everyone ages 16 and older receive a booster shot if it has been at least six months since completing your primary series for an mRNA vaccine or two months after a J&J &J vaccine. 16 and 17 year olds can only receive the Pfizer dose as a booster, but adults can receive any authorized vaccine. Booster doses can help raise your immunity to help keep you from getting sick. 
There's also some early data showing that three doses are more effective against Omicron than two doses. And we'll talk more about Omicron later. I also wanna point out that there is a difference between booster doses and an additional dose. People with moderately to severely compromised immune systems are especially vulnerable to COVID-19 and may not build the same level of immunity to two-dose vaccine series compared to people who are not immunocompromised. These individuals are eligible for an additional dose to improve their response to their initial vaccine series. And adults are able to get a booster dose on top of that additional dose. Um, some interesting numbers about Coloradans who are boosted. They are 3.3 times less likely to be hospitalized with COVID-19 than people who only received either the two doses of the mRNA series or one dose of J&J. &J. And our early data shows that they're 47.5 times less likely to be hospitalized with COVID-19 than people who haven't been vaccinated at all. Next slide, please. While initially all COVID vaccines were authorized by FDA under emergency use authorization, FDA approved the Pfizer vaccine for 16 and older under the name Comirnaty. Children age five through 15 can also get Pfizer under the EUA. Comirnaty and Pfizer are the same and can be used interchangeably. Next slide, please. The timeline for developing COVID vaccines was possible for several reasons. Researchers relied on decades of previous, previous research on other viruses and vaccines to help develop COVID vaccines. Also, everyone involved dedicated all their resources and time to developing a COVID vaccine. This includes research institutions, government agencies, philanthropic organizations, and pharmaceutical companies. As a result, researchers were able to conduct different parts of the development process on parallel tracks instead of one after another. Researchers had to work quickly, but not at the risk of anyone's safety. They did not skip steps. Safety and effectiveness were the top priorities. Next slide, please. Um, sorry, uh, moving on to vaccine trial information. In clinical trials, the vaccine for ages five to 11 was around 91% effective at preventing symptomatic COVID-19 infection. Trials for 12 to 15 year olds were 100% effective. And in 16 and 17 year olds, when they were studied, it was approximately 95% effective. COVID-19 vaccine safety was studied in over 3,000 children ages five through 11 who received the vaccine as part of the trial and no serious side effects have been detected in the ongoing study. Um, over 414 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine have been given in the United States uh, as of, this was as of late October, so even more now. Um, and vaccine monitoring has historically shown that side effects generally happen within six weeks of receiving a vaccine dose. For this reason, um, uh, for this reason, FDA required each of the authorized COVID-19 vaccines to be studied for at least two months or eight weeks after the final dose. Next slide, please. As many of you probably know, it's normal to have side effects after COVID-19 vaccination. It's part of your body's immune system responding to the vaccine. In trial, children tended to have milder side effects than teens and adults. Side effects can be local, such as pain, redness, or swelling on the arm where you got the shot, or they can be systemic throughout the rest of your body, such as fever, chills, or muscle pain. Next slide, please. Very rarely, a person can have severe side effects, such as anaphylaxis, which is a severe allergic reaction. This can happen after any kind of vaccination. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine has also been associated with a rare blood clotting syndrome, which led to that recommendation today that I mentioned before, as well as very rarely with a neurologic condition uh, called Guillain-Barré syndrome that results in weakness and or numbness. But the important thing to know is that serious side effects are extremely rare. Next slide, please. Another rare side effect that you might have heard of is myocarditis or pericarditis, which is inflammation of the heart muscle or surrounding tissue. Most of these cases have been mild and people often are covered on their own or with minimal treatment. These conditions are much more common with getting COVID than they are from the vaccine. CDC continues to recommend COVID-19 vaccine for everyone ages five and older, given the greater risk of illness and severe complications from COVID. Again, side effects are extremely rare 
FDA and CDC have many vaccine monitoring systems in place to keep an eye on the safety of COVID vaccines. Next slide, please. That COVID vaccines are safe for pregnant people and people who are trying to get pregnant. In fact, pregnant and recently pregnant people are more, much more likely to get severely ill with COVID compared to non-pregnant people. So it is especially important that they be vaccinated. There is no evidence that COVID, causes, COVID vaccination causes any problems with pregnancy or fertility. Next slide, please. Some people ask why children and teens should get vaccinated for COVID given that they are at a lower risk of becoming severely ill than adults. This fall, we've actually seen higher rates in school of children than in adults. We know that children can get COVID, that some children can get very sick from COVID. They can have both short and long-term complications from COVID and they can spread COVID to others. Children with underlying medical conditions are particularly at risk. You may also, uh, uh, sorry, next slide please. You may also have heard of breakthrough infections. A vaccine breakthrough infection happens when a fully vaccinated person gets infected with COVID-19. Because no vaccine is 100% effective, we expect to see vaccine breakthrough cases. Fully vaccinated people with a vaccine breakthrough infection are much less likely to be seriously ill than an unvaccinated person who gets COVID. Next slide, please. The Delta variant is currently predominant in Colorado. It is more transmissible than prior variants. Vaccines continue to reduce a person's risk of getting COVID, including with the Delta variant. And there's a link here to information on the CDC variant page. And we have information on the CDPHE page as well with uh, up-to-date information on what variants we're seeing in Colorado. Next slide, please. I'm sure everyone has heard of the Omicron variant, which was first identified in South Africa late last month. There are concerns that Omicron might be more transmissible than the Delta variant, or that the immune response may not be as effective to Omicron. Vaccination is still very important. And in particular, early evidence has indicated that booster doses are especially important against Omicron. Next slide, please. Finally, in addition to getting your COVID vaccine, we also recommend yearly flu vaccine for everyone six months and older. Getting your flu and COVID vaccines at the same time is allowed. Pediatricians have seen a drop in other routine vaccinations since the pandemic began. We wanna make sure that all kids are up to date with all of their routine immunizations. And as a pediatrician, this slide is especially cl close to my heart. Um, so thank you. And I will turn things over to Olivia. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so we wanted to share some general information. Uh, anyone age five and older can get the vaccine. We're CDPHE and all clinics will provide interpretation. We have mobile vaccine clinics via buses available statewide. And in the next slide, I'll talk about how to find more information on those. We also offer transportation services. There's phone and website registration for most providers. And finally, vaccines are free and you do not need health insurance. A question that we get often is, do I need to be a US citizen to get a vaccine? You do not need to be a US citizen and you will not need to prove lawful presence to get a COVID-19 vaccine in Colorado. Your personal data will not be shared with federal agencies or immigration. You can opt out of Colorado Immunization Information System, which we often refer to as CIS, the State Immunization Registry. Vaccination sites are sensitive locations and ICE does not and will not carry out enforcement operations at or near vaccination sites. One question we get often is where can I get vaccinated? So wanted to walk through a couple of different ways that you can find a vaccine. So first, uh, we offer community vaccine sites throughout the state. In order to find the vaccine site that is closest to you, you can visit covid19.colorado.gov slash vaccine finder. And then if you instead would like to get a vaccine via our mobile bus or a pop-up clinic, we list those out every week on our website. And you can find that website at um, www.mobilevax.us slash clinics. And if you go to the main CDPHE website, all of these links are right there. 
Folks can also find vaccines at retail pharmacies, including Walgreens, CVS, Sam's Club, Walmart, Costco, City Market, Safeway, and King Supers. Um, of course, around the state, local healthcare providers and public health agencies also provide vaccines. And then one resource we want to make sure everyone knows about is that you can actually call the CDPHE hotline to learn more. That number is 1-877-CO-VAX-CO or 1-877-268-2926. This hotline is amazing. They're able to help you answer questions and they're actually able to help you book an appointment. So if you would rather have someone help you book an appointment, feel free to call that hotline Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Saturday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So a couple, we're gonna just give one quick uh, COVID-19 vaccine campaign update. So what we're working on right now is we're partnering with community partners all around the state uh, to make sure that they're sharing information about how to find a vaccine appointment and make booking easy. We're making plans with entire families to get vaccinated over winter break, to go together to as a family over winter break to a community site near, uh, near your home. We're engaging and mobilizing pediatricians all around the state to be accessible to families who do not have easy access to medical services. And we're meeting parents and caregivers where they are. We're hyper-localizing our outreach strategies and expanding the pool of community-specific trusted messengers and equipping them with localized resources and tools to answer questions and address concerns. So we're really working to meet everyone where they are to ensure that everyone is able to access the vaccine. Uh, and with that, I'm actually going to turn it um, uh, back over to Amy. We're gonna stop our slideshow here um, so that she can introduce our next guest. Thank you so much, Olivia and Dr. Burakoff, um, for that wonderful information. As I said, we know that you as educators, often uh, people come to you as trusted sources of information. And so we wanna make sure that you have that information. Again, if you have questions for follow-up, please reach out to Olivia. Her email is in the chat and she will be happy to follow up with you at any point. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the governor of our great state of Colorado, who would like to bring us some words of encouragement um, this evening. So Governor Jared Polis, welcome. Thank you for being with us and I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Amy. I think somebody might need to activate my video because it won't let me do it. Hopefully somebody who's a minister can, uh, can activate my video, but hopefully you can all hear me and shortly they will be able to activate my video so you can uh, see me as well. Thank you, Amy, for that kind introduction. Thank you uh, to Dr. Anthes, our great commissioner, uh, who's been a steadfast leader during the pandemic, Dr. Birikoff, uh, Olivia, uh, thank you again. There we go. And there we are. Hello, look, okay, good to see you all. Um, thank you for joining us tonight to learn more about the COVID vaccine for children aged five to 11 really an important part of uh, returning to normalcy and, and getting on. Uh, first of all, we were excited, we were happy to work with Amy and teachers across the state to prioritize protecting teachers uh, early uh, in the vaccination process. And I personally, on a personal level, encourage all of you to get boosters if you haven't yet. Uh, it's shown to be particularly important for the Omicron variant, uh, which is already in Colorado and will quickly become the predominant variant as it has in other places. It was earlier this week that we celebrated the one year anniversary of the very first shipment of COVID vaccines in Colorado. Really, for me, a uh, couple personal highlights of my governorship. One was signing the bill that established free full day kindergarten for every child. And uh, where I know that you're all very excited about that as well. Uh, the other was, of course, signing the, yes, it came on FedEx, the FedEx slip to accept the very first vaccines in Colorado, knowing that that would save tens or hundreds of thousands of lives. Since, since that day, 81% of Coloradans 12 and up have gotten a booster. Uh, now, with it open to ages 5 to 11, 26% of 5 to 11-year-olds have gotten vaccinated. Uh, that ranks us uh, ninth of all the states. Uh, but we can and we need to do better. And that's progress. 
But with every vaccine, our classrooms are safer, our school communities are safer, our pa families are safer. And right now, parents across the state are deciding when to vaccinate their kids. And many of them want more information. Armed with science-based information from our best researchers and public health experts, our educators and school staff can be effective messengers for safety and efficacy of the vaccine. Doesn't mean you need to be experts, doesn't mean you should be doing the hard sell, but we want to empower you with facts to answer questions, point people to good data, uh, help alert people about the dangers of misinformation, point parents towards reliable scientific information about the effectiveness of the vaccine, which is very close to 100% for kids. Uh, at any given day, we have 15 or 20 kids in the hospital from COVID, zero of them are vaccinated. We've had no uh, kids that are 12 to 19 that are vaccinated when hospitalized. It essentially makes the risk zero for kids. I was excited to get my 10 year old and seven year old vaccinated. And I know that so many parents across the state have been excited and many will do so in the coming days. Uh, sadly, misinformation and disinformation remains rampant, causes fear and confusion, ultimately costing lives. Uh, people can find out more about, about the vaccine at covid19.colorado.gov. We have more than a thousand vaccine providers across the state. Many families are getting the booster while they get their kids vaccinated. Uh, helps inspire confidence in the kids as well. And we also encourage all families to speak with their trusted family doctor about any questions that they have. Uh, we know that having kids in the classroom is critical to our student success, to Colorado's recovery, for teachers to be successful. Uh, we've made a, a lot of progress in the next last few years uh, from free full day kindergarten to universal preschool that starts in 2023. We're proposing the highest per pupil funding for K-12 schools ever, major increases. So, so know that as you're out there supporting students, supporting their families, getting good information to people, we are working to support Colorado's teachers in return. Now I'm proud to turn it over to our education commissioner, Katie Anthes. Katie? Thank you so much, Governor, and thank you, CDPHE, for arming us with, you know, the latest factual information. I, I can't emphasize enough um, the governor's comments about, you know, and Amy's comments about you all being such a trusted source of information. And combating misinformation is, is one of the challenges of our generation and our time. So um, thank you for all you do. Thank you for everything you've done throughout this pandemic. You are some of our most important frontline workers. We're so grateful for you. Um, and we appreciate all the hard work you have put in um, throughout this time. So again, thank you. We hope this webinar was, was useful to you just to get the facts. And so you are able to share those with your families and your communities. Thanks again for all you do. Amy, do you want to close this out? Sure. Thank you, Katie. Thank you so much to uh, Dr. Katie Anthes, to Governor Jared Polis, and to, of course, our partners at CDPHE for this wonderful evening sharing this information. It is so important that we have information that helps us to feel comfortable and confident in speaking with our family, our friends. Um, and, and of course, with our own selves, um, I will share with you that I, as I said, I am a mom to three students that attend public schools here in Colorado. Uh, just last week, my uh, 10 year old and nine year old were able to receive their second dose. And it was a very, very happy day in our family to know that we were a fully vaccinated family of five. Um, so it is so important for us to do all that we can to keep our family safe, our school safe, and our community safe. And we thank you for all that you do to educate the students of Colorado and also to keep our students and families safe. We wish you a wonderful winter break. I hope you find some rest and relaxation. And again, if you have any follow-up questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to Olivia at CDPHE. We thank you for being with us this evening and thank you for all that you do. Take care, be safe, and be well.